tonight is the most significant New Orleans Saints game ever. On the NFL calendar, it was just another game in September 2006. But in New Orleans, they were calling it a miracle. A moment almost unimaginable 13 months ago is here. The Saints back in New Orleans, back in the Super Bowl. Back here, in a building nearly destroyed by Hurricane Katrina. A building used as a refugee camp for a devastated city. A year later, the building had been rebuilt, but it was still unclear if the city would ever be. And then, on the very first series of the game, one man signaled hope with a thud. Look out! Right through! A pick up by Steve Gleason! Touchdown, New Orleans! For those people who look to the New Orleans Saints as something that will uplift this city, they just had it. Everyone was right here, and then that just made everyone explode. It was awesome. Michelle Gleason, like most in the crowd that night, was still recovering from Katrina, which had destroyed her parents' home and business. And like most in the crowd that night, she was overcome with joy that moment, all the more so because it was created by the man she was going to marry. I mean, that was Steve that just did this amazing play. Did you have a chance to go down to the locker room right after the game? <laughs> of course. I ran to him and just bear hugged him, and I had to pretty much get peeled off of him. Steve Gleason's dramatic punt block led the Saints to a blowout win. And some say it's the most important play in franchise history. And even after he retired, it was the first question anyone asked him. If you got to pick one thing that you're going to be known for, that is fine with me. So uh, I'm, I'm confident, uh, I'm comfortable with my career. Um, all, my, all my playing days were here in New Orleans. That was 2009. This is today. They know once, I mean, people still come and say, hey man, that night you blocked the punt. Bro, that was the greatest night of my life. Thank you. Steve Gleason is 35 and suffering from ALS, a rare disease that destroys the muscles of the body and keeps going until it shuts down the lungs. In a cruel twist, there is only one part of the body ALS doesn't affect, the mind, which means that Steve Gleason is totally aware of his physical demise. But the cruelest twist of all? The game that made Gleason a hero may be what struck him down. We don't worry about cutback. Yeah, I know. We gotta get to that first play, play, that front side side play. Gleason was the classic undersized overachiever, the kind broadcasters love calling scrappy or gutty. No one drafted him out of college, but he made the pros anyway and stuck around for eight years, mostly on special teams. Of course, he never knew how long it would last, so he was always preparing for life after the game. I knew that any day football could be taken away from me, so I wanted to have a foundation for the rest of my life. So Gleason did some things you might not expect of an NFL player. He studied poetry and literature, played guitar, was passionate about the environment, and traveled the world every offseason. And while most of his teammates lived in the suburbs, Gleason rented a tiny apartment in the heart of New Orleans so he could soak up the culture of a city he grew to love and call home. Naturally, he fell in love with a local girl, and they ran off together. Literally, backpacking all over the world for six months before coming home to start a new life together after football. You got married, you come back to New Orleans, you're getting your Master's of Business Administration at Tulane. Life was pretty good. Yeah. When did you recognize that something was happening to your body? The fall of uh, 2010, I noticed a muscle twitching. When the doctor told you that it was ALS, what were your emotions? I think there's a sense of anger and frustration, like, hey, this doctor just told me I have ALS. Fuck this doctor, I'm gonna go talk to another doctor. Gleason, just 33, 
wondered how he could have a rare disease that typically strikes people in their mid-50s. But it turned out he wasn't alone. Around the same time, Real Sports reported on the unusually large number of former NFL players being struck by ALS, often at far younger ages than normal. How many times were you knocked out playing in the NFL? Twice. How many times did you have your bell rung? Probably hundreds of times. When you were playing, did you entertain for a moment that hitting people as hard as you could with your head might be causing you brain damage? There was one of the last things that was on my mind. There is no way to know if head trauma caused Gleason's case, at least not until his brain is analyzed after death. Of course, he hopes that doesn't happen for a very long time. For now, he is making the most of the time he does have. And that's meant doing the one thing he never would have done before, accepting his limitations. One thing that's been really helpful is, as Steve was losing his abilities, rather than trying to fight it and trying to do everything on his own, he was able to let people help. So rather than take 35 minutes to try to eat, I'd be like, can I do this for you? And he'd say yes. After all this, you might expect Steve Gleason to resent the game of football. And you might expect him to have resigned himself to his fate. But you'd be wrong. The man who helped rally a city in its darkest hour is now rallying himself. When the one-year anniversary of his diagnosis rolled around, he celebrated life like this. And when we visited him at his Idaho lake house, he insisted our crew join him for a swim. One, two, three. When Steve was diagnosed, he said, I promise to smile and laugh and cry and love for every breath that remains in my body. Has he done that? He's done that very well. Thank you. He's also taken his trademark fight to the disease. He started a foundation called Team Gleason, which will soon open a care facility for other ALS victims in New Orleans. He went to the United Nations to speak about the need for improved technology for ALS patients. And even though he's confined to a wheelchair, he keeps other victims active by taking them on adventures like this week-long canoe trip to Montana rather than focusing on what the patient can do. Let's focus on what we can do. It's this passion for life that made Steve and Michelle want to have a child, despite Steve's disease. Last October, Michelle gave birth to a healthy baby boy, Rivers Gleason. What's Rivers like? She's perfect. Hi, Dad. <laughs> Having a child has given me a profound sense of purpose. When Steve learned that he was going to be a father, he started making video diaries for Rivers. In the beginning, he barely showed any symptoms at all, but that would rapidly change. It's my intention to put together a gift and present it in some way for, for you my child. Um, I have been diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. We are at the hospital. Michelle's having some contractions. Um, we're not sure. They just want to have us come in and take a look at her. But want to let you know. Man, in general, today I'm feeling uh, tired and uh, it's the first time today, man, I watched uh, some of my videos for the last couple of days, and I listened to myself, and I was saying, wow, I sound, sound ill, <laughs> sound sick. And that's, uh, it's tough, man. But I've told you before, and I'm going to say it again. <clears throat> I'm going to be around, buddy. And uh, 
It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be awesome. Because Steve will probably lose his voice, he is preparing for the time when the only way he will be able to communicate is by typing words with his eyes. Thanks to technology, whatever he writes will be heard in his own voice. He played us some of an essay he wrote for his son, explaining that he named him Rivers after what he loves most. As year of birth approached and the name emerged, I began to think about why I love Rivers. When I was young, I spent my summers playing in the Spokane River. I am cleansed and baptized by the rivers. I am most at peace when I am at the river's edge. Last month, Steve Gleason and his family sat along the banks of the Mississippi River, back at the scene of his heroic moment, the New Orleans Superdome. Two, one. There, the Saints unveiled a statue of, just maybe, the most important play in their history. Cast in bronze, it commemorates how one man inspired a city to push forward and pursue life, even in the face of death. I'm trying to be an example of overcoming the ultimate adversity and continuing to live and be an example. Let's focus on drinking up as much life as possible between now and whenever it might be that we die.